25-year-old Pete Turner lives in Maidenhead in the south of England. Right now, Pete seems to have it all. He's in a loving relationship with girlfriend Beth, and he's just landed his first proper job as a college lecturer. I would say that I am a pretty normal 25-year-old guy. There's just one thing that stops him leading a happy life. Pete is addicted to meat. Every day I eat gammon, sausages, bacon, beef burgers, chicken. That's about it. The reason his diet's so weird is because he's terrified of vegetables. And to make matters worse, girlfriend Beth is a strict vegetarian. He often reacts to my food in a bad way and thinks that it's gross, and so that makes me feel like I'm gross for eating it. Unless Pete can change his culinary ways, he risks serious relationship crisis. Getting him to beat his addictions will be the job of clinical psychologist Stephen Bryars and nutritionist Natalie Savoni. While Natalie will encourage Pete to try new foods... Oh, see, that's amazing to me that you don't know what cheese is. Stephen will guide Pete through a series of psychological obstacles... One puck, do your thing. ...designed to help him score success with his diet. Mm -hmm. Pete Turner lives with girlfriend Beth, her mum Val and partner Brian in suburban Maidenhead. Pete works as a lecturer in film studies at nearby Bratnell College. When he's not teaching, he and Beth spend virtually all their time together. They've been in a relationship now for six years and there's just one thing that comes between them. Bacon, it's the love of my life. Um, I just love it. The only thing that Pete eats is dry, Crispy meat. It's very difficult because Pete hates vegetables with a passion and I don't eat meat, which is all that he eats. Pete won't even kiss Beth until she brushes away the taste of veg. <laughs> His fear of new foods is so strong that he can't stomach eating with other people. He gets anxious about sitting down and having a meal with people. Don't like it. It just reminds me of when I was younger and having to eat things that I didn't like. Pete loves to travel, but won't visit any country unless there's fried chicken on the menu. Earlier this year, I went travelling around Southeast Asia, and um, Pete was unable to come with me because obviously there's not many fast food places in the middle of jungles and stuff. So it really holds him back. Pete's freakishly one-track diet is not a new development. He's always uh, only eaten certain things and avoided lots of other things. I know I ate baby food and I don't remember eating anything else after that. It's just been meat. He's not a faddy eater. It's not as if he's fussy. It's, it's much more deep-seated than that. With the support of two families behind him, Pete is now determined to deal with his food phobia once and for all. I really want to change. I just want to be pretty normal. <laughs> I'd like to be on my way to normal, anyway. <laughs> it's day one, and Pete comes to London for his first meeting with the experts. Hello. Hi. 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 Hello. Nice I'm to meet you. Hi. Hello. 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 How you Good doing? to meet you. Okay. Yeah, good to meet you too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, crazy. What is your What is your body language telling me about how you're feeling today? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, anxious. Nervous. It's not going to be that bad, I no. promise. Okay. Natalie and Stephen have a surprise in store for Pete, which they hope will focus his mind before the hard work begins. All right, Pete. <laughs> You are undertaking something quite difficult over the next few weeks and you need as many reasons to keep going as possible. And what we've got for you now is something that hopefully will give you a few more. So we're going to leave you to watch this and then we'll come back and talk about it. Hi, Pete. It's your girlfriend, Beth. Um, you worry a lot about food and you get so anxious and I don't... I hate seeing you that way. I really just wish you were free and to do whatever you want and travel the world and just not have to even think about eating. I know that deep down in her heart, Beth really wants you to change. She is very concerned for your health and, uh, and doesn't want to be alone in later life. 
Hi Pete, it's your dad. Just wanted you to know that you've got the support of mum, myself, uh, the rest of the family, Helen and Emma, uh, and uh, good luck and, and go for it. Please see this for you, not for anyone else, for you, because you are so important and I love you so much. <laughs> so how was that, watching all of those? Um, I don't know, pretty horrible. I was quite shocked by the worry that seemed to be throughout the messages for your health. I just, yeah, I mean, that's my main worry is my health. I want to change now. Before, I didn't want to, so I think hopefully, hopefully it's my own pressure. I, I want to do it, and, and I suppose mainly Beth. I want to mm. do it for Beth as well. How did you feel about the message from your father? It's just good to know that that's what I expected there, all behind me. And, and I was surprised yeah. not to see more, more members of your family there. They're, we're, we're not very open people, so they're, but I know they're behind me. In case Pete was in any doubt after hearing from his loved ones, Natalie and Stephen want to show him just how one-dimensional his diet really is. Pete's in the dark about exactly what lies ahead. First, the experts want him to get to grips with what he eats. Pete, yep. you are about to start negotiating a new relationship with food, all right? But to some extent, we're all going to be feeling our way over the next few weeks, and this is where you start, OK? And I want you to just have a feel around and tell me what you think this object might be. It's fairly large. That's a horn. Is it a wooden cow? Ooh. <laughs> wooden bull? Okay. You take your hands up and put them towards each other. Oh, what the hell is that? <laughs> what the hell? The he oh, no. What Don't tell me that's a dead chicken. Mmm, spot on. Done. Oh, right, wow. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Mmm. Okay, we have one more friend for you to meet. <laughs> oh no, this isn't a dead pig or something, is it? <laughs> oh no. It's something that you eat pretty much every day, you're right. It's a dead pig. Oh my god. Pete, if you like, you can take off your blindfold. Okay. Oh my god, that is horrible. These are the things <laughs> that you oh, do eat. Oh, that's horrible. Jeez. It surprises me that you're quite so surprised and grossed out by this. Oh, I do love animals, so it's crazy what I eat, but never see, I've never touched a dead body, as far as I know, apart from eating it. You've written up a food diary for us. Mm. We've done some calculations. And just with the bacon alone, mm -hmm. The hard facts are one and a half thousand rashers of bacon a year. Mm. Now that's the equivalent of nine pigs worth of bacon. Mm. And you can't bear looking at one. Mm. In addition to this, Pete consumes an incredible 600 sausages, 140 chickens, and munches through 240 beef burgers each and every year. What else do you eat other than meat? Uh, biscuits, chocolate. So meat, meat, mm. more meat, mm -hmm. and then some biscuits and chocolate. Yeah. I mean, your girlfriend's a vegetarian. Yeah. Do you think that I'd you... love to be a vegetarian. Would I'd you? Love to, I'd, love it. I'd love it. I would love to be a vegetarian. I just don't think it's realistic for me. If I could just cut down dramatically, that'd be good. All right, so you're accepting that it is time to change your diet. Oh, yeah. yeah? Me and Beth got the same birthday and stuff, so we'd like to be able to have a meal with the, with the full family and stuff like that. Do you know what? I think we ought to aim for the stars. So our challenge to you for that birthday celebration, you will sit down with Beth and the people you care about and have a vegetarian meal. OK. All right. Yeah. <laughs> you don't so sound we, we too sure. We can aim there. Yeah. 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 With the gauntlet laid down, Stephen and Natalie hope that Pete will now start to see his meat feasting in a completely new light. 
Pete's diet is absolutely shocking. We've got a really huge challenge on our hands with Pete to eat anything different, let alone a full vegetarian meal. He clearly wants to change very much, but the difficulty I think psychologically is I don't think he really believes deep down at the moment he can. And unless we can change that, it's going to be very difficult to make headway with him. Pete now has just one month to overcome his unusual eating habits. Seeing all the meats just... It has really, really shocked me and it's just really made me a bit sickened by meat. Back at home, Beth's keen to find out if there's been an early breakthrough. Uh, yeah. So has it put you off chicken and bacon? Mm, not quite, but it <laughs> makes me think about the dead bodies when I eat them. Did you have lunch afterwards? I had chicken later that day and it Did was you? horrible. Was it? I didn't get through it all which is not like me at all. <laughs> Pete's quest to enter a new culinary world is about to begin, and nutritionist Natalie's prepared a few healthy treats to get him on his way. Pete's diet is a mono diet. It's just meat. So I need to learn what it is that puts him off about these other foods and maybe look at baby steps that we can take to get him where he wants to be. Hello. Hello. You're looking quite uncomfortable, Pete. Mm-hmm. What's going on? Just, don't know, just nervous. Just don't know. I can smell it kind of thing. I can smell something. It's freaking me out. So tell me about what it is about all of this stuff that, as you put it, is freaking you out. The smell's worrying me. I know that I don't like green and fresh-looking sort of stuff. Don't know, juicy kind of thing. Now, when did you last try any of these foods? Um, I don't think I've ever tried that or that. You're saying that and that, you don't know what these are? I don't. I have a feeling that might be cheese and that might be radish. It's an aubergine. All right. But that's amazing to me that you don't know what cheese is. Natalie's plan is to get Pete interested by comparing vegetables to his beloved meat. Carrot, you like things that are crispy in here, don't you? Like crispy meat. Yeah. Sort of, yeah. Yeah. So, here's some carrot. Oh. What about a tiny piece of carrot? Why, why don't you smell it? OK. I'd rather do a small bit where that seems to be. Mm. Ugh, yuck. OK. What happened there? I'm just wretched. Mm, but what, what, why do you think that was? I just really didn't want to swallow it. And then when I went to it, just... Mm. But you got it down. Mm. Pete's diet contains none of the recommended five fruit and veg a day. While bacon contains iron, which is good for the blood, it is also high in saturated fat, which is bad news for the heart. An alternative source of iron would be a meal of baked potato, spinach and watermelon. That's more than 12 milligrams of iron each day and no fat. OK, I think we should move on, Pete. For some reason, the fruit doesn't worry me so much. The oranges and the apples and these things. Plums. Okay. Plums, oh, wow, yeah. they're huge. I thought they were small. They're different sizes and colours, plums. Mm. Do you want to cut yourself off a little sliver? OK. Just looks like every other fruit in here. Mm. Mm. It smells so good. Mm. That's not that bad at all. <laughs> so you didn't even know what this was two minutes ago. Mm. The fact that you've eaten something is an amazing bonus. Mm. I'm yeah. really, really pleasantly stunned. Oh, cool. Good. Yeah. yeah. Encouraged by the surprisingly good taste of plums, Pete goes on to sample a grape, some orange and even a bit of aubergine. Pete's done so well in just one day. My concern is for him to sustain that and to build on it is where the tough stuff really, really starts. Uh, today, I think I made a lot of progress already. I'm shocked at myself. Uh, to me, it's amazing. 
To help Pete continue expanding his diet, Natalie has given him a hamper of healthy homework tasks, which he'll have to carry out every day. Oh, my gosh. Your first task is to clear your kitchen of all that frozen and processed meat. You're going cold turkey. <gasps> oh, golly. Oh, my God. I think it was way over the top. <laughs> Oh, I think. Pete has his own freezer for his meat at Bat's house and Natalie has asked him to clear its contents completely to ensure he continues trying new foods. He's scared. Yes. Doesn't feel good um, to be throwing it all away. way. He's sad to say goodbye to all your chicken. Yes, extremely. It's painful. You can manage without being home for a while. Mm. You can do it. Mm. Oh, I think this is going to be the hardest thing Pete's ever had to have done. You can tell that he's really anxious by it already. I'm guessing she's trying to push me as far as she can. I, I think. I think she's gone way over the top. I can't imagine what I'm going to eat for the next four weeks. Pete's next homework from Natalie is to build on his enjoyment of fruit and eat a bowl of fruit salad containing five different fruits of his choice. No way in hell I'm going to get through one of this. It's going to take me hours. I'm pissed off. It's just a whole new ball game. No, no, no. It'll be fine. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. It's just going to make my life miserable. It's not. Wow, well, I'm doing really well. Yeah. You just get it over and done quicker. <sighs> After an hour of mm. determined struggle, Pete's nibbled through some strawberry and most of a plum. Feeling maybe slightly more comfortable. <laughs> I'm hoping that after a day or two of not eating meat, I'm going to feel better. I'm hoping that maybe I'll realise that it's not so bad. I'm ho hoping, <laughs> but I don't know. I'm probably going to just be even more miserable and probably getting some kind of withdrawal symptoms. I don't know. We'll see. Pete started life just a few miles down the road from where he now lives in Maidenhead. He was born the youngest of three children with two elder sisters, Emma and Helen. Pete's family first noticed his food problem when he was just a baby, but found it puzzling. We've absolutely no idea why, he's, uh, why he eats like he does. We have tried to get him to eat different types of food, but it's never resulted in anything. When Pete was 11 years old, his dad decided the family would emigrate to Australia, but eldest sister Emma chose to stay in England. Pete found it tough without her, but by the age of 13, he'd become a successful ice hockey player, although his diet showed no improvement. We've probably thought that there have been crucial times all along in that we thought, well, when he gets into his teens and he starts socialising with other people, he'll come out of it. At 17, after six years abroad, Pete and his mum were so homesick that the family returned to the UK. Today, Pete has his first session with clinical psychologist Stephen Briars. It's a chance for him to probe Pete's childhood for the origins of his food phobias. When did this first become a problem for you? Um, as long as I remember, it's been a problem. I don't, don't remember not having a problem with food. How did everybody respond or manage your eating problems? My mum kind of gave up eventually. On, on trying to make me eat new foods. What about your dad? How has he reacted to this over the years? It didn't go down very well. He, he, he always wanted me to eat. He always tried to make me eat kind of thing, so. Do you think your parents understood, you know, how difficult it was for you, or did I they get I just think it? they were desperate. And were you made to feel bad to eat when you were younger? <sighs> At school? I th I th yeah, oh yeah, God yeah, at school and at, and, and at home, I think. 
All right. In terms of significant events in the course of your growing up, I mm. mean, has there been anything that's been particularly um, traumatic or difficult for you at any time? Um, yeah, going to Australia. It doesn't sound it, but <laughs> it was to me. And what was mm. the hardest aspect of that for you? Leaving my sister, because she just had a baby. That was just horrible. So was your sister the person in your family who you were closest yeah, to? Yeah, 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 I think so, yeah. yeah. OK, and what was, it, what was it like in Australia when you got there? Because a big, oh, big change of culture. It was, I, was, I was just miserable for, you, for a, a couple of years. Extremely miserable. Why? Because I just hated it. I hated the fact that we'd moved. I hated it. I just wanted to be in England. I had friends in England. I had my sister in England, my nephew. Mm. Okay. I remember crying every night. I hated uh -huh. it. I was just miserable. It was the worst, like the worst time of my life. Okay. It's powerful what yeah. you feel in relation to it, isn't it's it? It's freaking annoying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's a good start, Thank though. Thank cool. you. Cool. Thanks. Given the amount of upheaval in his childhood, it's very understandable that Pete should be very inclined when it comes to his diet to hold on to the things that he knows and the things that he feels safe with. But of course, in order for him to progress, he's going to have to relinquish some of those habits of old. And that I think is going to be difficult, but it's going to be absolutely essential that he does so if he's to start eating more normally. To make Pete's transition to a new diet smoother, on Natalie's menu tonight is a crispy meat-alike in the form of fish cakes. Put one potato for every fish cake. The big challenge for Pete will be to eat boiled potatoes, a food he's never encountered before. I don't know, I don't mind the fish looks all right, but... Potatoes is a bit scary. Mm-hmm. I've got to try and get one potato to one fish cake. Fish is good for you generally, I think. Mm. Oh, well. Okay. Taste of potato now. Hmm. Ugh. You okay? Mm-hmm. Just scared I'm gonna get that taste of potato. With Pete making progress with his eating, Natalie wants to motivate a lasting change in his diet. And to do that, she's called in some help. Dr Pixie McKenna is a GP with a special interest in eating problems. She's analysed Pete's blood tests and today will reveal the findings. Have you had a health checkup recently or...? Mm, any, nah. No. No? Nah. Right. No, nah, nah, not for a long time. OK. One of the things that worried me was that you have a high level of cholesterol in your mm. bloodstream. Mm. The vast majority of it is LDL cholesterol, which is the bad form of cholesterol in the bloodstream leads to things like strokes, heart attacks, angina. You probably don't feel any different. Mm. You, you know, you don't, it doesn't make you feel any mm. different now. It will do ultimately because it will cause damage. The next thing that you could get are kidney stones because what you do have very high levels of in your blood is a product called uric acid. Uric acid is a breakdown product of these things called purines, and they're vital for the makeup of cells. Purines are natural substances contained in foods such as meat. When purines are digested, they produce a waste product called uric acid. The acid is difficult to dispose of and stays in the bloodstream. This can end up crystallizing in the kidneys to form a kidney stone. What I'm saying to you is you could have a kidney stone mm. imminently, which is really awfully painful. To illustrate the effects of Pete's diet on his health, Dr Pixie has prepared a demonstration in which this modified orange represents a kidney stone. Can you see those things that are sticking out of it? And that stone, with its irregular edges and its hardness, gets pushed out through what we call your urethra the pipe through which you pee. This tube of plastic will stand Ooh. in for Pete's urethra. 
and it tears the edges of it and it causes it to go into spasm as it tries to squeeze it out. And then you get an infection and then you get blood in your urine and then you get more pain. It's ripping, isn't it? I'm actually quite terrified of that. Yeah, it's awful. Mm. All for the sake of your diet. Mm. All for a bit of bacon. Mm. He could get a kidney stone tomorrow. And that eye-watering demonstration for Pete, I think, will have him wanting to change his diet in no time at all. It's definitely the most motivating thing I've had so far. Uh, it makes me really want to start having a balanced diet, that's for sure. While Pete becomes more motivated to change his diet in the present, Stephen wants to establish just how deep-rooted his food problems are in the past. Pete obviously has some difficult memories from his childhood, but while I've got no reason to doubt this version of events, I am conscious that we're talking about the situation as seen through the eyes of a child. I'm off now to meet Pete's dad to try and build up a slightly more comprehensive picture of what actually went on and hopefully to try and work out just how much impact this period of his life had on his eating problems. You had a young child who wasn't eating fruit or veg. That must have been quite a worry for you I, at the time. I, I, I don't sort of consciously remember Peter having a real problem in that he wasn't eating. He looks healthy. He behaves like a healthy child. He uh, doesn't, doesn't appear to have any other, I say any other, he doesn't appear to have any neuroses at all. It, um, it does sound at times, according to Pete, that things may have got quite difficult. Um, he has memories of, of sort of leaving the table um, to he avoid... He was probably sent from the table. <laughs> OK, so you, you're saying to me that there probably were times when you put Pete under a certain amount of pressure. Uh, what was motivating that? to help Peter grow up a healthy person. Do you think Peter understands that? Yes. Whether he did then or not, ah. I've no idea. It's an interesting question. I, I, one assumes that he would have known why we were trying to. I, I'm sure at some stage we tried a certain amount of explanation mm -hmm. um, rather than just uh, saying, you will eat that. Pete has mentioned that sort of at the time where you moved to Australia that that was quite a time of, of stress for him. Do you remember that being a hard time? No, not really. I didn't, I didn't perceive that uh, when we first went over there. It was, uh, um, he settled into school very well. I was very pleased with the way he coped with it. He seemed to cope with it very well. I, I mean, it sounds to me with, with Peter that sometimes, you know, sort of perhaps what you see on the surface doesn't necessarily reflect kind of what's going on underneath. Really? Uh, could be. Is that, I mean, is that, is that something... Could be. Is well, that I some... don't know. It's, if it's underneath, I can't see it either. Uh, <laughs> no, that, that's but true. That's, yeah, could be. Okay. Well, interestingly, Pete and his father seem to have had rather different experiences around the dining room table. But what I do think is clear is that Pete actually developed his eating problems as a means of protesting his unhappiness at the time. The difficulty is that problems then have now become entrenched in his identity as an adult, with the result that his food issues are continuing to affect him in the present. What I need Pete to learn is that he needs to untangle the hold of the past if he's ever to set himself free to eat normally in future. It's 10 days into Pete's new diet, designed to give his body a break from 100% meat, and already the effects are taking their toll. Well, it's a um, bit of a stressful week because he's been very unhappy. He's not been eating a whole lot. Um, I had to confiscate some cookies at one point because he kept eating them all the time. It's been very difficult for him. <laughs> been really tired, really hungry all the time, really irritable really depressed kind of thing most of the week and I've been taken out on Beth quite a lot because I kind of see her as my enforcer at the moment. Tonight, Pete's taking his mind off mealtimes by going to see his mate's band play a local gig.
Good times are quickly followed by bad as Pete breaks his no meat rule and drops in at his favourite fast food joint. Hey man, how you doing? Yeah, I know. Had to happen sometime. Sweet. I think, I think seeing us sometimes so well this week, it's all right just to have it this once. Let's just hope I don't go back to it every day. So I went out last night and got very drunk, feeling a little bit dizzy today. Um, and I just had some a tiny little bit of cereal for breakfast and lunch in one go and for lunch I had two bacon steak type things and six sausages. After two weeks of eating new foods, Pete's fallen off the meat wagon and into a major relapse. I'm okay as long as I can have a bit of meat and I've, and I've kind of done that then generally always have something why did I do it why did I why did I accept the challenge of going for a full vegetarian meal I, I still always will want to eat meat I do worry though about how much he hates everything and the fact that he does need to have meat to try lots of different things because it just makes me think that maybe he will never ever be able to eat everything and it's just too big a thing in his life that you know, maybe he won't ever eat like a normal person. Natalie's in Maidenhead and wants Pete's household to help motivate him to kick his meat habit for good. Right. What I'd like you to do is eat Pete's old diet for a whole week. <laughs> no. <laughs> exactly like Pete would eat, but obviously as a vegetarian, yeah. Beth, you're going to have to make some amendments to that. So, yeah. do you think that you would be able to eat Pete's diet for a week? Well, it's going to be try, really eh? hard, but I can see why you want us to do it. So, yeah, we'll give it a try. Natalie hopes their reaction will convince Pete how unappealing eating only meat can be. You never heard this before. Meanwhile, on Pete's homework menu is his first ever taste of tuna. This is the worst smell in the world. My first reaction is that it's horrible to me. I think that's a bit selfish, but um, that is the first thing I think. I can't bear to be around all that meat all the time. Um, for them, I'm starting to get the drift that it is going to be really, really horrible. I think it's going to be very boring and very unhealthy. Bon <laughs> Looks amazing. <laughs> this, is, this just is an explosion of overtaste. Yeah. Crispy, crunchy, cardboard size. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. With Brian's disgust made clear, still Pete can't resist helping himself to some chicken. How <laughs> can I eat them though? I could just have one. Uh, one, one. It's not as good as I remember that. See? I'm just in a really difficult position at the moment because on the one hand I want to be really rewarding to Pete and encouraging and, um, you know, try and help him by giving him rewards. So I think maybe he doesn't eat as much of what he hates. So um, I think I am going to have to get harder on him, which is really horrible because I don't want to. With Pete finding it impossible to stay off the meat, Stephen wants to tackle the issues that are tying up his progress. <laughs> what do you think it might be? A uh, rope in a, in a massive knot. OK, it is an illustration, essentially, that you still have a lot of issues that are all tied up together. Mm. I think the childhood experiences are the thing that glues the rest of it together. Now, as you start to unpick this, we're going to try and identify what are the various strands in this kind of internal knot of yours. OK. All right? Yeah. OK, so what kind of story, Pete, did you tell yourself about your dad when, he, when you were sitting around that meal table? I just thought he was mean. I just thought he was 
sort of nasty. You probably won't be surprised to hear that his memories are not quite the same as no. your recollections. What may have been experienced as him being mean when you were little, in a possibly misguided way, mm. may have been him doing his best mm. to try and make sure that, you know, you ate properly. Yeah. All right. What sort of things do you think might help to change your perspective on those past events? I don't know, positive experiences with eating with my dad and yeah, my if, family. And... Absolutely. I mean, if that's possible for you, I think that really will mm. help. I think so too, yeah. Okay. Definitely. The more you can separate out the different strands in this knot of yours, the easier it's going to be to untie. And hopefully, in time, we're going to get to a situation where both the eating problem and the impact of those childhood experiences can be put to one side. And then you're left with this, your adult identity, free of those mm -hmm. to develop in whatever way you want. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. I think it would really help Pete to start changing slightly some of the narratives he's got about some of the events that took place in his childhood, but that's something he's going to have to work on at his own pace. In the meantime, the priority for me is to show Pete that he already has the resources and the skills he needs to really make a significant difference to his eating here and now in the present. The yellow rope, um, which signifies me now, my adult, sort of who I want to be, I just want to be normal. Another person sitting at the dinner table, relaxing, having fun, socialising, like a normal person, that'd be nice. <laughs> In a bid to revive Pete's appetite for new food, Natalie has brought Pete to London's East End and plans to use his love of travelling as her secret weapon. Today, I really want to get him excited about what are strange foods to him. He's missed out on certain trips with Beth because of his fear of eating strange foods. This is it. Wow. I've been a bit mean because I've completely asked you to cut out meat entirely from your diet, which is your mainstay. The thing is that the idea of that was not so that you never eat meat again, but so that you're forced to mm. eat other things and try other things. Yeah. Today, Natalie will allow Pete a taste of meat as a way to encourage him to try new flavours. Yeah, it's like a stir-fry barbecue thing with some sauce on it. Mm. These powders... So those they're... powders, look, are different spices. Cajun. I've had the Cajun chicken before. So it's not too weird. No. God. That's scary. Right. That'll do, won't it? Now the bit you have been dying for, the sauces. Mm. Wet food is Pete's worst nightmare, and this mixture of spice and sauce is a far cry from Pete's old diet of dry and salty meat. It's not like a big, thick curry or soup. It's yeah. just a bit sticky. Yeah. I think you'll be able to do this. Mmm. Oh, I can try it. It's just That's looking very look. scary. Thank you. Yeah, see, that one looks a bit better. You first. Excited? <laughs> no. Not well, go on, just try a piece of meat straight up, and that's easy. Okay. Just on its own. Why are you doing it like that? Now try eating a piece of meat, but just look like you're eating normally. Like that. It's so difficult eating like normal people. <laughs> you do look very funny. You're very ladylike. <laughs> and then you're going... I can imagine, yeah, that's... yeah. <laughs> I don't mean to. It's just quite funny. Yeah, it so is. I had to tease you about yeah, it. No, it's okay. <laughs> Do you have to have sauce on things? You can get through life without having sauce on things, but given that you're up for travelling, this is an area where you could push yourself a bit more mm. and get yeah. further towards your goal. Okay. I don't want to completely undermine his achievement of having eaten something with sauce on it, but he's still miles away from really having a full range of foods to choose from. I don't know, I get a little bit excited about trying things, which I think helps, but I don't know, it was pretty pretty horrible and I don't think I'm... Get, I'm not, not ready for sauces too much yet, I don't think. The 
problem for Pete remains in his mind and Stephen now wants him to learn how to approach new foods more positively. I want him now to focus on happier times from his childhood that are actually unrelated to food. I want him to draw upon skills that he already possesses to give him the confidence to really start tackling his eating problems. While living in Australia, Pete was a successful ice hockey player, but gave up the sport on returning to the UK eight years ago. Aha. Hello. Welcome. All right. What, what attributes or what characteristics do you think a good ice hockey player needs? Uh, confident. I think you need to, to know how to skate. Now, Pete Turner, when you approach a plate of unfamiliar food, mm -hmm. what goes through your head? Uh, I know I'm not going to like it. I know I'm going to hate it. I think I'm probably going to retch or yeah. something along those lines. That's what you are mentally rehearsing in your head. Out here on the ice rink, you learnt that you had to see yourself succeeding. It's just the same mm. with your food. And I need you to sort of stop playing those tapes in which you fail and start to practice visualising yourself succeeding with mm. food. While Stephen covers the goal, making it harder to score, Pete sights himself up to take on the challenge. All right, there we go. One puck, do oh. your thing. Okay, do Yay! Oh my god! <laughs> I can't believe it. That is fantastic! Were you always able to shoot a puck into a goal like that? No. Nah, nah. So how did you get there? Um, I don't know, practice. Yeah. Do you see the difference between what you did just now and what you do when you're presented with some a food that currently you're frightened of? Yeah. Yeah? Practice in your head, rehearsing the possibility of it going well mm. rather than badly. I think Pete did get the point in theory, but I think that in practice, while his levels of anxiety and lack of confidence are so high, it's going to be quite hard for him to really believe that image of him eating successfully. There's just one week to go until Pete's final challenge to eat a whole meal of vegetarian food. Natalie wants him to get practising with a trial run of a vegetable stir-fry. Beyond help when it comes to this one. Um, I... I've heard of stir fry, but I've never had a, a, I don't know, I suppose maybe when I go travelling I might have to have something like this, so I guess I sort of see the point, but yeah, more, more than anything I just don't want to, don't want to do it. <laughs> this is probably the worst thing, but if I can get through like quarter of it tonight I'm going to be happy. The onion smells okay, so maybe, maybe it'll be alright, maybe. Oh, you've ended this. I don't know. <laughs> Feeling anxious about the task ahead, Pete summons a little Dutch courage to help him through. I'm really not used yeah, to colours. Mm, okay. Going for a bit of onion. Yeah, I thought maybe that would do. Mm, it smells so good, fried onion, doesn't it? Good, isn't it? Hmm. It's okay. Look at fiddling about. Just get it done. It's Come on. Okay. I was impressed that you've even eaten. <laughs> I can't believe I've eaten any of that. I really can't believe it. Despite Pete's efforts to conquer his fears, he still has doubts about eating a whole vegetarian meal. The thought of actually having a whole meal that's just vegetables is pretty horrific, really. 
Pete's final challenge is just days away and he's still scared about eating vegetables without any sign of meat on his plate. What Pete needs to do now is to learn how to counteract some of his automatic assumptions and really learn to distrust that part of himself which is just kind of going, no, you know, hold off, this just isn't safe for you to put in your mouth. Yeah. To try and help you make a bit more progress, we have a challenge for you today. Okay. It's a little bit of a case of mind over matter because I still think what's going on in your head is what's preventing you from making the progress that you need to. Yeah. Let's go and do it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a walk in the park. You're not going to make me walk on broken glass, are you? Because that would be dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. That's what your senses yeah. are telling you. And I want to prove to you that actually sometimes things that look dangerous don't have to be because that's precisely what you're going to have to tell yourself in relation to vegetables, mm. sauces, and all these foods that at the moment seem so threatening. Okay. Stephen wants to smooth Pete's path to successfully eating a whole vegetarian meal. If he can shatter Pete's instinct to avoid things he fears, Stephen might help Pete take the final steps towards his goal. One of the things about doing the diaphragmatic breathing is that actually it's one of the most effective ways of telling your nervous system to come down from that state of red alert. You're actually giving your whole body and then your mind the signal things are okay. Yeah, that's fine. Just put some... Cool. So you shake it all out for me. If Pete can walk on glass, then eating veg really will be a walk in the park. Good. Inhale one more time. Exhale, put it down. Want to hear you breathe and look up. It's still there for a second. Just feel that difference in you. Yeah? Try to take another step now, so breathe in. Lift that foot up, move across the glass. Yeah! And exhale, let it get down. Its job is to make that sound. That's and then stationary. This is great, Pete. It actually looks controlled. You look composed. It's, it's good. <laughs> okay. One more step to the edge of the glass. You can look where it is now, because you've mastered this. Congratulations. Nice one. This really is something that potentially you can take away with you, all right? Mm. What made this possible for you was the state of mind in which you approached it keep saying to yourself that actually the danger you perceive isn't real mm. and you stand some chance okay. of being able to cross the dietary divide mm. yeah, and okay. join the rest of us on the other side. Yeah. yeah, I've got a huge sense of accomplishment from what I've done today. I can't believe it. This is perfect, you know, I've, I've, I, I know now that I can control anxiety. It's the morning of Pete's big day, and he's taking some time out to contemplate the task ahead. Yeah, I'm kind of worried about the fact that it's going to be a big sort of group um, of people. That's going to be very scary. Um, it's going to be the first time I've seen my parents and best parents in the same room kind of thing, so that will be weird for me. Um, uh, it's all, all just going to be very weird. Back at the house, Beth and Val prepare the meal. I think he's really ever so apprehensive. Um, I think that this is going to be really hard for him because he's never done a whole meal. He's done all sorts of bits and pieces very successfully, but to sit down for a whole meal with all the family, that's going to be quite something. Not only is it the final task today, but it's mine Pete's birthday as well. So um, um, it'd be nice if he could enjoy himself and enjoy the celebration, really. So if he gets really depressed, then if he doesn't succeed, then it will sort of put a down on everything, really. Just, if there was just a few bits of chicken, I'd feel so much better. I'd be able to do that, and still, that's huge for me. So the fact that I've got to do it with no meat just sucks and just 
depresses me and ugh, I'm just, just not looking forward to it at all. It's just going to be horrible. As the dinner guests start to arrive, so too does the food. Pete will be eating a meal of vegetable fajitas and mixed beans with a side of sweet corn and spinach. <laughs> Oh, what a lovely noise. But before he sits down, Natalie and Stephen drop by to offer Pete some last-minute words of advice. The same rules apply, OK? Use the techniques that we've taught you, you know. Remember how, what resources you've got inside you to do this and really go for it and do yourself proud. We'll be rooting for you. OK, okay I'm really you. confident that you can do this. Yeah. Really, I so am. I. You've, you've come of. a hugely long way. Try and enjoy it mm. if you can. I will try. But at the very least, just, you know, do put that. into action what you've worked on over the last few weeks mm. and you'll be absolutely fine. So we'll leave you to it. OK. We're going to leave you and then come back and have a little chat with you at the end. OK. So right. go and enjoy Thank it. You. Have Good fun. Luck. Bye. <laughs> Pete dreaded family meals as a boy, so will he be able to stomach this one? Yeah, that's that's enough. Thank you. I'll just suck as much as I want. Sit together, yeah. Do you want to try any of the sauces? Are you sure? Oh, yeah. Just a little bit? Just a little bit. Yeah, well, cheers, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> mm. You're doing really well, Pete. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I actually have a theory that you're eating it that way because every time you take a mouthful, you squeeze and more of the filling goes out. It's all down there. It's all down there. Have you had any spinach yet? Yes, three leaves. Same spice. How's he done? Very well. Yeah. Very well. I suppose the real question, though, is when you eat your meat in future, are there going to be other things on your plate as well? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Fantastic. Mm. Happy birthday. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And, and well done. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 What difference, what difference is this going to make? No, I think it's going to be a huge, huge difference. I think. <laughs> you get um, yeah, you've done so well. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> good, good birthday present for you. Oh yeah, the best <laughs> present ever. <laughs> Who needs diamonds, eh? Oh. A few red peppers and peas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just do it once a year then. <laughs> <laughs> I'll raise your glasses, all right, for a toast. Mm. To the man who is no longer Pete the meat. It's a really good result, really good result. I mean, four weeks ago, this guy, you know, really was, it was a meat-only diet, and, you know, today he sat down and eaten a vegetarian meal. Absolutely amazing. I wasn't sure he'd really, really get a whole plate of vegetarian food down, because he never has. To have transformed to that degree was absolutely amazing, and he did it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to be a vegetarian in the future, and if I am, then I'm going to still have those meat substitutes. But. I don't know, you know, I know I'm going to keep eating vegetables and fruit and stuff, so it's everything I wanted to achieve and Beth's obviously just like, I don't know, ecstatic, I guess. Um, I think we're going to be able to do anything now and everything really, uh, go travelling and just do anything we want to, I think it's changed everything. One month on and Pete's dietary revolution is still in place. Over the last month I've tried um, all sorts of things that I never thought I would try, like mushrooms and onions. And I love throwing herbs on food and stuff. I really enjoy it. I feel like Jamie Oliver. So. <laughs>
and it's affected more than just his attitude to food. I really think that Pete has grown a lot through this process. He's a lot more confident and seems more happy in himself and also he just seems to care about himself a bit more, like care about his appearance. His skin's clearer and he just looks healthier. In fact, it's opened up a whole new world of possibilities. I'm not scared to go to any other country now. You know, I'll know I'll find something to eat. We can do lots more stuff sort of together, so it's awesome. Click on screen for more videos of extraordinary humans.